Charles Percy Snow was an English novelist, physical chemist, and member of the House of Lords, known for his advocacy for modernizing scientific education and for improving communication between the sciences and the humanities. Today I wanted to do his spirit justice by presenting his elegantly minimalist description of the original three laws of thermodynamics. Sometimes called the Ginsberg Theorem or Ginsberg Parody after poet Allen Ginsberg, Lord Snow's students actually argue that Snow originated this description first as a teaching aid. Paraphrasing a little, Think of thermodynamics as a game you play with the universe. The points are scored in units of useful energy. There are three rules to this game. 1. You can't win. 2. You can't tie. 3. You can't stop playing. No timeouts, substitutions, or quitting. Let's go over these rules. First law. You can't win. Energy is conserved. Uh, over practical human scales. I see you, Emmy Noter. Energy can be converted from one form to another, but it can't be created nor destroyed. You can't create useful energy from nothing. There is no getting ahead of the universe in energy points. The best you can maybe hope for is to break even? You could also call this the no free lunch rule, or for you fans of Japanese anime, the law of equivalent exchange. Second law, you can't tie. The most familiar consequence of the second law of thermodynamics is that heat always flows passively from hot to cold. If you want it to go the other way, you have to put in work. But this law says something more general than that. It says you can't perfectly reverse any process. You can't go back to the past, because total entropy always increases. Now, if you restrict your attention to a limited system, the contents of that small box can certainly be reversed and brought back to a previous state, in the same way that, for instance, water can be refrozen into ice. But if you zoom out even just a little, you will see that you invariably need to do work in order to enact this reversal, and that expenditure of work is irreversible. There is a deeper implication that the second law is linked to the arrow of time, quantum information, and entanglement, which is a topic to be covered by much smarter people than myself. Third law, you can't stop. The third law says that as temperature approaches absolute zero, molecules will fall to the lowest possible energy state, and entropy approaches a constant, often zero or at least close to it. This is non-intuitive phrasing, so the third law is often restated as its most immediate consequence, namely, it's impossible to get to absolute zero. Why this is may seem confusing if you think of temperature as a simple continuous trend line. What makes it quote-unquote easy to cool down from 2 Kelvin to 1 Kelvin, yet impossible to make the seemingly equal step from 1 to 0? Well, there are a few ways to understand this. One, a consequence of the math is that heat capacity goes to zero when approaching absolute zero, meaning that it takes an infinitesimally small amount of energy to raise the temperature above zero. Two, it's not temperature that's important, but something called thermodynamic beta, also sometimes called coldness, the inverse of Boltzmann's constant times temperature. Beta is related to the amount of entropy gained per unit of energy added to a system. When you plot beta with temperature, it becomes a little clearer why absolute zero is an impossible state. Alternatively, you could recall the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Absolute zero means that molecular motion almost entirely stops, precisely defining a particle's momentum at almost zero, which would make its position almost infinitely undefined. And if a particle can suddenly be almost anywhere, it will interact or entangle with something, absorb heat from it, and immediately heat back above zero. What I like about this analogy is how it condenses these important foundational concepts into the fewest words possible. The details still need to be explained, and I've glossed over many of them in this quick video. Deep understanding takes time and effort, but everyone needs to start somewhere. Everyone's brain works differently though, so what's important is not that you learn any specific analogy, but that you find the accurate explanation that resonates with you, whether that be the original text, Snow's shorthand, mathematical equations, or even Full Metal Alchemist references. As an advocate of communication and understanding, I really doubt that Lord Snow would mind. 